This is a higher prevalence than that of the state of Illinois and the United States. Adults who are considered to be obese or overweight, meaning they have a BMI of 25 or more, there are 72.2% of adults in McHenry County, which is also higher than Illinois and the United States. Demographic differences that we see are that those who are 40 to 64 are more likely to be obese than those who are 18 to 39 or 65 and older. Those with low household incomes are more likely to be obese compared to those with mid to high household incomes. And those who identify as white or Hispanic are more likely to be obese than those who can, likely to be obese compared to those who identify as other races or ethnicities. Uh, for obesity, McHenry had about 20% higher uh, percent, had 20% higher percent change compared to Illinois and the U.S. And uh, for obesity and overweight, McHenry had a lower percentage. It's statistically statistically different, but only marginally higher. We can see that the Harvard area has the highest rates of obesity throughout the county. In youths, obesity prevalence had a minor increase from 2012 to 2018 for both 10th and 12th grade adolescents. In 12th graders, over, the number overweight slightly decreased, is slightly lower than Illinois, and obesity rates are similar. The overweight prevalence had a minor increase from 2012 to 2018 in 10th grade students, and then obesity and overweight are similar, prevalence are similar to Illinois again. Uh, we can see that the percent of adolescents who are obese is lower than that than the percent of adults, meaning that obesity is more of an adult concern than in adolescents. Food insecurity is linked to obesity, as those who are food insecure have greater rates of obesity, and the main objective is to target obesity and active living, and to do that, we need to take into account food insecurity in the county. Overall, from 2015 to 2019, the county food, food insecurity rates are stable, and the child food insecurity rate is decreased over the same time period. Uh, there are two standard questions to determine food insecurity. 18.1% um, of residents stated that they often or sometimes worried about food and would run out, of, run out before they got money to buy more. And 13.2% of residents stated that often or sometimes food did not last or did not, they did not have money to get more. For both of, these, both of these questions, women were more likely to run out of food before they'd have money to get more or sometimes food did not last compared to men. Those who are 18 to 39 were more likely to run out of food before they got money to buy more or food did not last, compared to those who are 40 and older. Those with low household incomes were more likely compared to those with mid to high household incomes. And those who identify as Hispanic or other race or ethnicity were more likely compared to those who identify as white. And for the last uh, priority, I'll pass it over to Chloe. All right, like Bora said, I'm, I'm gonna be talking about our last priority group and it's going to be access to care. So when we asked um, the community and um, all of our various groups um, specifically here for the key informants, they ranked access to medical services among the top four health concerns in McHenry County for all residents. So using the American Community Survey, in 2019, 5.2% of McHenry County residents were uninsured. So using 2019 as the reference, uh, this was lower than the percent of uninsured residents in 2014 and in Illinois, um, as well as the United States at 8.6, 6.8, and 8.8 percent respectively. Um, however, on the very right, you'll see that according to the McHenry County Healthy Community Survey, we have um, that McHenry County's percent of uninsured population is nearly double at 10.3 percent. This difference could be due to differences in the methodology that were used for the American Community Survey as well as the Healthy Community Study. Um, additionally, it could be because the Healthy Community Study was during the COVID-19 pandemic while the ACS was pre-COVID, so the loss of jobs could account for this difference as well. So when people were um, out of work and potentially losing their benefits, they potentially then became uninsured, which could account for that 10.3%. Um, that there are some demographic differences in the percent who are uninsured. 
So those who are 19 to 64 were more likely to be uninsured compared to those under 19 or over 65. And um, that could possibly be because under 19, you're likely on a parent's plan. And if you're over 65, you're eligible for Medicare. Those who identify as Asian were 51.9% less likely compared to those who identify as white to be uninsured. Those who identify as other race were 3.5 times more likely compared to those who identify as white to be uninsured. Those who identify as Hispanic or Latino were 4.6 times more likely compared to those who identify as white to be uninsured. Um, those with no high school degree were 2.8 times more likely compared to those with only a high school degree to be uninsured. And those with some college or an associate's degree were 41.9% less likely compared to those with only a high school degree to be uninsured. And then finally, those with a bachelor's degree or higher were 66.2% less likely compared to those with only a high school degree to be uninsured. So essentially with the schools, um, the higher education level that you have, the less likely you are to be uninsured. So here on this map, you can see um, where the 8.5% um, or more of a given population is uninsured. And so in these areas, we have Woodstock, um, Harvard, McCollum Lake, and a very small part of Crystal Lake. Um, and then for the Medicaid and Medicare data we got from the Centers for uh, Medicare and Medicaid, or Medicaid and Medicare Services. So for Medicaid, there is a lower percentage of individuals who are on Medicaid in McHenry County than in the state. And then as far as Medicare over the last five years of available data, um, we are all increasing slightly, but um, we're all about the same. And then on this slide, we have the ratio of residents to physicians, dentists, and mental health providers. So um, something to keep in mind for this slide is that a higher ratio of residents uh, to providers indicates um, a lower number of available providers compared to the size of the population. So as far as these graphs, the lower you are on the graph, the better. So the y-axis or the, the vertical axis is what you want to pay attention to. So um, the smaller ratio is what you want. So in all instances, uh, McHenry County is getting worse, meaning that we have fewer providers in each category per resident. Um, but for mental health providers, the one on the very right, you can see as Illinois gets better, so theirs is going down on the y-axis or the vertical axis, McHenry County is continuing to worsen. Their, um, their ratio is increasing. And then the Healthy Community Study asked residents what services they received in the past year. Um, they listed wellness visits at 75.8%. 71.4% um, stated that they received dental cleaning. 58.3% received preventative screening. 54% received a flu shot or vaccination. 26.8% received any other annual vaccination. And um, significantly lower number of individuals received mental health education or screening at 16.1%. And also, please keep in mind, this was during... COVID, so this also could have potentially impacted these numbers as well. Um, there are some demographic differences in preventive health services received in the past year as well. So men were less likely to receive mental health services compared to women. Uh, those with low household incomes were less likely to receive services for wellness visits, dental cleaning, preventative cleaning, flu vaccination, or other annual vaccinations compared to those with mid to high household incomes. Those who identify as Hispanic were less likely to receive services for wellness visits, preventative screening, flu vaccination, or other annual vaccinations compared to those who are white or other race and ethnicity. And as a reminder, other race ethnicity also includes black, Asian, um, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, Alaska Native, um, American Indian, and other. Um, other demographic differences for preventative health services in the past year include those who are 18 to 39 were less likely to receive services for wellness visits or preventative screening compared to those who are 40 and older. Those who are 18 to 64 were less likely to receive services for flu vaccination or other annual vaccinations compared to those who are 65 and older. And finally, those who are 65 and older were less likely to receive services for dental cleaning or mental health compared to those who are 18 to 64 years old. So some barriers to care. So 19.1%, according to the McHenry Healthy Community Study, stated that they delayed care due to cost. 
This is lower, or excuse me, this is higher than Illinois and the United States in 2020, where in 2020, 10.3% of um, residents stated that they delayed care due to cost and 106 for the United States. Um, this difference could be because of COVID, because with Illinois staying 2020, healthy community study 2021, again, this could be potentially because of um, loss of jobs opportunities due to COVID. For delaying care due to appointment availability, 18.1% um, of McHenry County residents stated that they delayed their care um, because there were no appointments available soon enough for them. And then the X's on here represent that the data was not available for comparison. Um, additionally, 11.7% of McKinney County residents stated that they delayed um, taking their medication due to cost. And then there was no comparison for Illinois and the United States for this question. There were some demographic differences for this as well. Women were more likely to have delayed medical care because of cost compared to men. Those who are 18 to 39 were more likely to have delayed medical care because of cost compared to those 40 and older. Those with, ho with low household incomes were more likely to have delayed medical care because of cost and delayed medication due to cost compared to those with mid to high household incomes. And those who identify as Hispanic or other race ethnicity are more likely to have delayed medical care because of cost and delayed medication due to cost because of the, um, compared to those who identify as white. Other demographic differences include those who are 40 to 64 were more likely to have delayed medical care because of appointment availability compared to those who were 18 to 39 and 65 and older. Those with mid to high household incomes were more likely to have delayed medical care because of appointment availability compared to those with low household incomes. And those who identify as other race ethnicity are more, more likely to have delayed medical care because of appointment availability compared to those who identify as Hispanic or white. We also looked at additional barriers to care, so why somebody would not be able to receive medical care um, could also include not having vehicle access, not having access to a computer or internet. A lot of the times you need the computer or internet to either um, have telehealth or you need it to, to make an appointment. Um, so, and I know that a lot of um, doctor's offices also use like virtual portfolios and your, all of your medical records are on an online portal, so that would make it difficult as well. So when we looked at this, 3.9% um, of households in McHenry County had no vehicle access, um, and that's highlighted by those darker um, areas on the map on the left. 4.9% of households did not have computer access, so again, those darker areas um, for that middle graph. And then the 7.6% had uh, no internet access. Um, and something to note, too, is that the areas with the no vehicle access actually align pretty closely to where our older population live. And I also am going to be talking about prevalence of disabilities. So as far as hearing impaired, vision impaired, difficulty concentrating, um, McHenry is equal to Illinois and the US. So for hearing impaired, 6.8% of McHenry County residents stated that they were hearing impaired. 2.7% stated that they were vision impaired. 8.3% stated that they had difficulty concentrating. Um, as far as difficulty with mobility, McHenry County, 8.4% of residents had difficulty with mobility, which is lower than the Illinois and US values. Um, some demographic differences for disabilities. Those who are 65 and older were more likely to have difficulty hearing or difficulty with mobility compared to those under 65. Those with low household incomes were more likely to have difficulty concentrating or difficulty with mobility compared to those with mid to high household incomes. And those who identify as other race or ethnicity have, were more likely to have difficulty concentrating compared to those who identify as white or Hispanic. Um, and that is our final um, priority group. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Megan to discuss the health priority work groups. Okay, phew, we're done with all the data, so we hope that you guys found that as riveting as we do. Um, so we're a little bit ahead of schedule, which is good, so we can get you guys out a little bit earlier, um, depending on the questions. But so now that you've seen all the data and um, you found out what our priorities are in our county, now we have to talk about 
what we actually do with this data and how we address these issues. So we have um, chosen some objectives that we will follow as we move forward. These are, we choose our objectives based on Healthy People 2030, and for those of you that don't know what that is, it's national um, data-driven objectives that are set nationally, as I said, and we kind of follow those for our long-term objectives and our, our um, short-term objectives. So what we'll do is, I'm gonna just put these up on the screen, but these are just our Healthy People objectives. So when we form our work groups, we'll actually develop local objectives and some initiatives that are more local, and then we'll pull in our partners so that we have, um, we have pr uh, priority objectives that are um, targeted toward our representative, targeted toward our groups in McHenry County. So this is the behavioral health and the obesity and active living objectives. So I'll let you guys look at those. Those will also be available online for you to look at. And then diabetes and access to care. So we will report out on these um, as we move forward. So every year we pull together all our MAP partners, which I will talk about in a second, and then we review where we are as far as these objectives go. Um, so that's the plan. So our work groups. So we have collaborative work groups and that they've been ongoing since 20, 2006. So it's been a really, really long partnership with these work groups. So every approximately three to five years, we change work groups um, based on our new priorities. So these are gonna be our priorities moving forward for the next three years. So we have, our behavioral health is obviously um, one of our number one priorities, but the mental health board kind of leads that, uh, leads that initiative, so they will be the ones that are deciding what work groups work on that and then um, pulling that together. So um, the Healthy Living Coalition is an existing coalition that we have that has currently been working mostly on obesity, but we're, what we decided that we're gonna do moving forward is we're gonna have subgroups of that coalition um, on obesity and diabetes, they very work very closely hand in hand and a lot of the objectives kind of melt together. So we're just gonna have different subgroups over that entire work group. And then we also have an active communities work group that is ongoing, so we are gonna keep that one going, but that work group is very active. Um, they have some really good initiatives moving forward and some funding initiatives, so we're really excited about keeping that work group going. And then as far as access to care, what we think we're gonna do is use our existing work groups and then incorporate some objectives into those work groups that address access to care. I know our hospital systems are also looking at access to care and looking at initiatives to improve that too, so we're gonna collaborate with them um, through our existing work groups and try to address access to care. So if anyone is interested in participating in these work groups, I hope that you'll contact me. Um, the more partners that we have working on these work groups, the, the better outcomes that we have, and so we appreciate anyone who takes the time to work on this, and my email is up here. This will be available online, but um, my email is also available online, so you can, you can email me, you can call me, whatever, and we're, we'd be really excited to have you guys. So that's all I have as far as our work groups. So we're gonna open it up to questions, so I'm gonna bring the entire team up here, so we can address any questions that you guys have. Um, we don't have a microphone for the audience, so if you have a question, if you could just speak up, that would be greatly appreciated. Anybody? No questions? Wow. Oh, go, go ahead. Um, I wouldn't say anything in particular in terms of what came out was a surprise. Some of the magnitude of the disparities was definitely worse than I expected to get to a point where we're seeing things like 16 times higher for some indicators and things like that. I was not, I was expecting 
uh, disparities along those lines. I was not expecting the magnitude of those disparities. I think that was what was surprising to me. But in terms of the actual measures we found out, I, I don't think that was surprising in terms of what we were seeing with a lot of those indicators. Um, it kind of goes along with what we've seen over these last, uh, you know, multiple studies. We're seeing many of the same indicators doing a lot of the same problems. Um, but it was really kind of that magnitude of the difference in the demographic groups that I think it was the most startling, at least for me. Was there anything you guys wanted to add? No, that was, no I wanted to add something too. <laughs> um, I think that one of the things that we saw is we've been really working on some of these objectives for a really long time, like cardiovascular disease and things like that, and obesity. But I think COVID is going to set us back a lot. So we're going to see these things that we've been working on and seeing trending going down, going up again. So we have a battle ahead of us. And I think that that's going to, the effects from COVID is going to be long from probably 10 years out. So we're going to be battling that too. So I was surprised to see some of that data. Sure. Um, I think what we'll do, like I had said before, so those that participate in our MAP work groups um, will, every year we kind of pull everyone together so we can talk about where we stand um, as far as that year goes. And then, what did we say, three years out? What's our short term? Um, it's five and ten years. Oh, so at five years, we'll actually have some data on where we stand. But we can't really, I mean, you can speak more on this yeah. about looking at the data. <laughs> yeah, we, um, so the, the impact objectives and the outcome objectives are right now five-year and ten-year benchmarks to be consistent with Healthy People 2030 and Healthy People, um, well, Healthy People 2030 and kind of like a five-year difference between them. Um, with a lot of our programs, we are looking at how can we make shorter term objectives to figure out where we are in comparison to that. I think that is something we'll likely be doing in this case, and it's one of those things we would present out during that kind of yearly meeting that Megan mentioned to say, okay, where are we? Is this the direction we want to move in, or is this different? The hard part with a lot of the indicators is that those indicators are collected over a long period of time for many of them, or they're collected via our Healthy Community Survey, which is only done every three years or so. So where we can, we'll try to find data to pinpoint where we're at, but some of those will only really be able to evaluate between assessments to see where we are. And because we're using Healthy People 2030 right now, we will have another assessment, if not two, between now and Healthy People 2030 to kind of look at how we're trending in that direction. But we are looking at how can we evaluate short-term goals to see what progress we're making. There was another question, I think. Yeah, go ahead. 